Hey guys, Taylor here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about fish photography and how I do it. Photographing betta fish is really rewarding. Like it's it's being able to see all the work that I've put into a spawn and growing out a fish and just getting like the perfect snapshot of like a flaring male or just a beautiful female and feeling like, you know what, that's what I did. I did that. It's nice, I, I really like getting good images of my fish. But I've also struggled with this. I've really struggled in the past and currently with photography. I'm not a photographer, like by trade. I'm not a photographer, I, just a little while ago, I knew nothing about cameras, I had to teach myself everything and how to take good pictures of fish. And it's actually not very easy. Like if you were just to take your phone and try to snap some good pictures of your fish tank, you see it doesn't probably doesn't turn out very well. Or if you have a beautiful betta fish and it's moving around really fast, it's hard to get a good picture of it. And this is something I really struggled with in the past is getting good pictures because I really had to like get a better camera, really learn about how it works which I'm still not even like remotely an expert. I feel like I'm just sort of intermediate. I've had to learn about proper lighting and I've had to experiment with a few like studio lighting type setups to try to get the images that I want. I think I've come up with a solution that really works for me and really works for photographing bettas. This is my current workstation. It's really nothing fancy. I'm literally perched above a bathtub here. It's, you know, it's, it's not a great, set up, but it's working for what I do. What I have is I just have a board going across the end of my bathtub and I've taped a piece of like poster paper, white poster paper to the wall here. And I sort of have it arced um, behind the fish tanks just so I don't have like the wall back there behind my fish when I'm trying to photograph them. And I also have a couple different colors of this poster paper that I can use depending on if I'm photographing a light fish or a dark fish. This is a pretty dark, pretty metallic blue fish here and he looks really great on this white, which actually turns more into a gray in my backgrounds. So I like it. I have a little bottle of vinegar and a tissue paper over there for if I get some dried water droplets. I have a female in a jar right here, just, just so I can pick her up and move her around easy in case my males don't really wanna flare and cooperate. Getting a female right next to them sometimes excites them. I have some tasty pellets, not for me. So what I do is I actually come down here and I sit I just kneel in the bathtub like this. It gives me like the perfect height. And this is my setup. This is just a really bright Phoenix LED light that works great for what I use it for. And it's nice and warm. Like it'll keep the water warm while I'm working here. These two tanks are some DIY, just glass photography tanks that I make. I'm gonna put a link to on the video where I actually put them together. They're long and really narrow and it works great. Like I love these tanks. I wanna make two more. So I'll, I'll put the fish in these tanks, carded. I'll wait till they're comfortable. It can take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes to overnight. And then all I have to do is remove the cards like this. And if the males feel comfortable, which the little blue guy doesn't really know what to think right now, there we go. Then I'll get some really good flaring. And this is how I get my photos. There we go. And this is usually a lot of fun if I get males who cooperate and fish who are interested and cooperate with me and give me what I want. Sometimes I'll get some real sissies and I'm talking some real sissies. Last night I had to leave uh, two males in here just like overnight and then for another 12 hours as I, as I went to work, I just left them in there because they were so uncomfortable with the photo tank because they'd never been in one before. And I admit that it's, it's my fault because I hadn't been like handling the fish much or moving them around like I usually do. This batch of fish, I wasn't doing that. So a bunch of my males got just startled about the photo tank. It made things hard because that means I had to wait a long time in between doing photos. Oh, but luckily I got those guys out of the way and I think I'm on to, to more brave fish. See, they're doing great. They're doing fantastic over here. So then I'll just sit here perched in the tub just snapping some pictures, maybe some video, and just getting a whole bunch of really nice pictures. I'm a bit of a stickler about pictures. It's hard to really be able to sell a nice quality betta if you don't have a picture of a full flare. That's what people wanna see. That is how you see the form of the fish. It's how you get a really nice idea of what the finage is like. I'm watching them right now. Gosh, they're so pretty. And without that really nice full flare photo, it's, I don't wanna sell my fish on my website, that's simple. 
This is probably the hardest part about actually getting fish for sale on my website is the photography part just because it's so time consuming. Like last night, I literally spent an entire day of every single second of, of free time that I had photographing fish and I, I only got through like about 10, like 10 who passed, who passed my very rigorous standards. Their other ones are like, they're still great fish, but they're probably going to my local pet store. I've already gotten some pretty good pictures and video of this blue guy right here. And now I want to bring the fish that's in the background to the foreground and get some pictures of him. So to do that, um, I usually, you know, I just take very gently, take the light off because I don't want to startle anybody. Put it in my lap and then I'll very gently take this guy in front of me in the foreground, him onto my lap. And that's what's so nice about these photography tanks that I made. It's that they're very lightweight. They're easy to move around. They're easy to handle. And that's really what I needed. Oh, and they don't scratch up like acrylic. Before I was using some like plastic acrylic type cubes. And not only was I getting scratches in them when I went to clean them, um, but also it just the depth was too much. There's too much depth to it. I was having trouble staying focused on a fish because it darted back and forth. So you can see I really slowly I mean, brought the background fish into the foreground, straightening him up there. He's not too startled. He's like, what the heck's, the heck's going on? Now I'm gonna card him from the other fish. Being moved is a little bit startling. I'm just gonna let him relax for a minute and I'm gonna put the light on top of it. Now this might be the most startling thing that happens is this light but I move slow and I try to set it down very quietly. But without this light, I really wouldn't be able to take nice pictures. Cool. And now that I have that white guy in the foreground, I think I'm just going to put my dark gray background just really gently behind like this. Now I'm gonna sit here and I'm just gonna maybe give him like five minutes, 10 minutes, just to relax a little bit. Then I'll uncard and the flaring will start again. Once I'm happy with the photos I've taken, I just really gently, I scoop the fish out just into a little cup like this. And I transfer him over to the tank where I have all of my separated males, which if I, I think I'll put a link here on how I made that. And then I'll just, I'll make sure that he comes to temperature for a few minutes in his divided area and then whoop, just dump them out and get the next fish. That's how I take pictures of my fish. That's what I found works the best is just a nice studio type setup, bright light, nice camera. That's how I do it. Sometimes I get fish that are very startled with the photography tank and in that case, what you can do is if maybe you have a male who's just a little bit nervous, he doesn't want to flare, you can give him a female to flare at instead of another male. Like maybe he's just, he's, he's intimidated, he's a little stressed out, try giving him a female to flare at instead of a male. If that's not working, I would say just card him and leave him in there overnight and try again. Like what you, you just want him to feel comfortable. You want him to feel like that's his little space and his little territory. And usually if that doesn't work, if the fish just can't really get over his fear of the photo tank, he just, he goes to my local pet store. Just, there's nothing wrong with the fish. He's just a little on the uh, timid, worried side. And I don't have a ton of time with my life and my toddler and just everything going on to devote to just getting a fish picture. I just don't have that time. Yeah. So I'll leave this video with a bunch of other uh, photographs that I was able to take in this session. I have maybe like 18 or 20 more fish to photograph. It takes me quite a while to do, um, but I'm gonna have these guys up for sale on my website really soon. All I have to do is like go through my pictures and pick the best ones and crop them and do all my stuff and it takes a while. Like I said, that's like the hardest part about selling fish online for me is just the individual photographs. You know, I probably don't need to do photographs, but it's just something that I want something that I really want to be able to show. So thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope this helped you out when it comes to photographing your fish and I'll see you next time.